She is a pop culture icon who's lent her name to comic book characters, video game vehicles, films like the Banshees of Inner Sharon, TV shows, fighter jets, and more. Her signature shriek, her scream, her cry, her wail, her howl is the stuff of legend. Literally, she is the Banshee, a supernatural songstress whose mournful melodies precede impending death. The Banshee roams the Irish countryside, hovering just above the ground like a vapor, gliding over bogs, passing Stingy Jack and the Dullahan and other Irish spirits in the night, perhaps. There is some unknowable magnetism pulling the Banshee toward the house in the distance, toward her target. She clatters against the shutters, peers through the window, and she screams. Her scream twists and morphs into a nasally high-pitched dirge, punctuated by bursts of weeping. Hovering at the window, the Banshee calls an old man to his death. She is a siren spirit of doom, singing exit music for a life. Or at least that's one interpretation of the folkloric being known as the Banshee. Turns out there's much more to this character than is depicted in modern popular accounts. There is a rich history of alleged Banshee encounters in Ireland and Scotland, as well as long-standing debates over what the Banshee looks like, hideous crone or youthful beauty, and which families, direct descendants of Milesians only, can expect a visit. The definition of Banshee. First things first, what is a Banshee? I mean... Is it a ghost, a spirit, a wraith, a demon, a fairy? In a word, yes. It is all of those things, but there's some nuance to be found in defining Banshee, naturally. So, here's my best attempt at crafting a comprehensive definition. A Banshee is a supernatural being from Gaelic, aka Goidelic, Celtic folklore that takes the form of a shrieking or sometimes singing woman. Often associated with particular families, Banshees warn of the impending death of someone in a household. The Banshee is believed to be a remnant of the reign of the Tua de Danan, the gods of Ireland who were defeated and driven underground by the invading Milesians, who represented the arrival of Celtic culture in Ireland. Each member of the Tua de Danan subsequently went on to occupy a mound or hill known as a she. Thus, the once gods became known as the A-She, meaning people of the hills, and were relegated to fairy status. To quote Irish poet W.B. Yeats, the pagan gods of Ireland, the Tua de Danon, robbed of worship and offerings, grew smaller and smaller in the popular imagination until they turned into the fairies. And that comes from the book Fairy and Folk Tales of the Irish Peasantry from 1888. At the same time, it's impossible to deny the characterization of the Banshee as a ghost or spirit, an ethereal, wispy, semi-transparent female phantom. Just read this excerpt from author D.R. McNally Jr.'s book, Irish Wonders, also published in 1888. The Banshee is really a disembodied soul, that of one who, in life, was strongly attached to the family or who had good reason to hate all its members. The Banshee is of the spirits who look with interested eyes on earthly doings and deeply attached to the old families or, on the contrary, regarding all their members with a hatred beyond that known to mortals, lingers about their dwellings to soften or to aggravate the sorrow of the approaching death. McNally's definition strips the mythology away from the folklore. A recurring theme is Ireland, and Scotland underwent Christianization. Under this folkloric interpretation, banshees are not ancient Irish pagan gods living on as fairies, but the ghosts of dead family members. Alas, I propose a third explanation for the Banshee's origin, one that combines the divine with the spectral. What if the Banshee was originally imagined as the ghost of a goddess of the Tua de Danan, a powerful goddess associated with life and death and cemeteries and regarded as the inventor of the high-pitched singing style keening that has been used to such great effect in Banshee lore? Yes, I have someone specific in mind. Have you guessed her yet? starts with a B. I'm going to save the big reveal for later. In the meantime, there's a more pressing matter to which we need attend, one that will help us to better understand the nature of the Banshee. Why do we call a Banshee a Banshee? How did she get her name? The Etymology of Banshee The English word Banshee is derived from the Irish Banshee, which, according to historian Peter Beresford Ellis, translates literally to Woman of the Hills. In modern usage, however, Banshee has come to mean Woman of the Fairies. This makes sense given that the aforementioned term she, which once referred to fairy dwellings, has become synonymous with the fairies themselves. And while many of us tend to think of the Banshee as more of a ghost or ghoul or spirit, her name belies the fact that she is 
technically, at least according to Irish linguistic tradition, a fairy. Alice confirms the Banshee's fairy status in his own definition of Banshee, and I quote, After the gods went underground and were, in popular folk memory, transformed into fairies, a Banshee became a female fairy attached to a particular family which warned of approaching death by giving an eerie wail. And that comes from the book A Dictionary of Irish Mythology, 1987. The Banshee, spelled B-A-N-S-I-T-H in Scots Gaelic, but pronounced the same, is one of many fairies from Gaelic folklore to follow the word plus she naming convention. There's also a beautiful enchantress called the Lenan She, a giant black cat called, appropriately, the Cat She, and a green hound called the Koo She. While the Fairy Hill-based etymology for Banshee is widely agreed upon today, historically there have been a variety of interpretations. As D.R. McNally Jr. explained, the name of this dreaded attendant is variously pronounced as Banshee, Banshai, and Benshi, being trans translated by different scholars, the female fairy, the woman of peace, the lady of death, the angel of death, the white lady of sorrow, the nymph of the air, and the spirit of the air. The angel of death translation screams of Christianization, which is to be expected, of course, given that the church spent centuries trying to retcon the origins of the familiar fairies of Irish and Scottish folklore, explaining them away as fallen angels. Other translations, as noted by Victorian ghost hunter Elliot O'Donnell in her 19 seven book the banshee include a woman of the fair race the woman of the barrow and the woman of sorrow meanwhile up in the scottish highlands the banshee is more commonly known as the ban nye washerwoman or rather the ban nye is the most popular type of banshee to quote from folklorist john gregerson campbell's 1902 book the gaelic other worlds a banshee is any other world woman the ban nye is a specific otherworld woman. This Scottish banshee who is known to wash the grave clothes of a person who is near death also goes by the diminutives, and I'm going to apologize in advance for butchering these, Nyag Bieg Abron, Little Washer of the Sorrow, Nyag Nahatha, Little Washer at the Ford, and Ban Nyakan, Little Washerwoman. Interestingly, the washerwoman iteration of the banshee has a parallel in continental Europe. In France, former home of the Gaulish Celts, we find Les Lavandiers, a trio of washers or midnight washerwomen with roots in Celtic folklore. Other areas where the washerwoman tradition appears include Brittany, a famously Britonic Celtic rather than Gaulish Celtic region of what is now modern-day France. The washerwoman appears there as the Canarized Nas. Then there's the Iberian Peninsula, former home of the Celtiberians, where we find several localized washerwoman traditions, including Bruxas Lavaderas in Portugal, Las Lavanderas in Cantabria, As Lavanderas in Galicia, and Les Lavanderas in Asturias. In some versions, the washerwomen clean the burial clothes of those destined to die, while in other iterations, it is the death shroud or burial shroud the washerwomen clean. Moving on. It's worth noting that in some circles, Galicia and Asturias are considered part of the so-called modern Celtic nations, which are basically countries or regions like Ireland, Scotland, the Isle of Man, Wales, Cornwall, and Brittany, where Celtic culture still has a strong presence. Some question the Iberian inclusions because unlike with the aforementioned six Celtic nations, there hasn't been a continuously spoken Celtic language in Galicia or Asturias. Then again, some people question the very premise of there being Celtic culture at all, which is something I wrote about recently over on irishmyths.com. But I digress. The bigger takeaway here is that we can see the connective tissue between the folkloric traditions of the Gaelic Celts, the Irish and Scottish with their Banshees and Ban Nye, and the traditions of the broader Celtic world, the Britons, the Gauls, the Celtiberians. All of them had feminine death figures who could be found hovering, sometimes literally and figuratively, around humans who were at death's door. And again, that hints toward my earlier suggestion that the Banshee's origin story has more mythological significance than one might initially assume. Maybe, originally, the Banshee wasn't just a harbinger of death, but a goddess who had power over life and death. It's no secret, of course, that many of the most important deities in Irish mythology, like Lu, have cognates in Welsh mythology and Gaulish mythology, proving the interconnectedness of said mythologies. To quote Ellis, the fact that one can see relationships and counterparts demonstrates that Irish mythology is not a separate entity from the rest of the Celtic world. In it, we find echoes of a common Celtic mythological, religious, and perhaps historical experience. Banshees are one of those echoes. 
In part two of my What is a Banshee series, we'll explore in greater detail the Banshee's physical and sonic characteristics. Spoiler alert for centuries-old Irish folklore, turns out Banshees appear differently and sound differently to different people. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment and basically just tap all of the shiny buttons and by the end of it, make sure you are subscribed to the Irish Myths channel. That really, really helps. And if you want to learn more about the Banshee as well as other monsters from Irish mythology, check out my book, Irish Monsters in Your Pocket, a tiny little book about Irish dragons, werewolves, vampires, banshees, headless horsemen and other beastly beings. Irish Monsters in Your Pocket is the third book in my Celtic Pocket Guides series and you can find links to it in the other two books in the series, Samhain in Your Pocket and Irish Myths in Your Pocket in the description below. My name is I.E. Neverday, editor of the short story collection Neon Druid and creator of irishmyths.com. Thanks for coming out.